Hello, in part three of this bond valuation series, I'm going to show the calculation of the yield to maturity, which, as we learned earlier, is actually the market interest rate on the bond. And this market interest rate, which is the yield to maturity, represents the average rate of return that you're going to be earning on the bond if you buy it right now at the prevailing market price and you hold it until maturity. Obviously, if you sell it somewhere down the road prior to maturity, then uh, you're going to be calculating a different holding period rate of return for yourself. All right, now, on the flip side, keep in mind that the firm that's borrowing from you, the issuing firm or the issuing entity, that yield to maturity, which you call your required rate of return, your rate of return, represents the interest rates that they're going to have to pay on the bond. And so to the firm or the borrower, it represents the cost of debt. So here's a quick example. It says that coupon rate on a bond is 8%, phase value is 1000 bucks, and maturity is 5 years. Now though, the bond is currently selling for 1030 If you purchased this bond for this 1030 and given that the bond pays interest semi-annually, what is? your required rate of return. What's your yield to maturity? What's your R? Calculate R. So this is again color coded for your um, for to facilitate learning and here again these are the three ingredients we need in valuation. We need to know the expected cash flows. In the case of a bond it's going to be the uh, periodic coupon payments and the face value. Secondly, we need to know the maturity of the investments or the investment period, and in this case it's five years. Of course, since it pays interest semi-annually, it's going to come out to be 10 periods. Now though, to calculate value, we need to know R, the required rate of return, the cost of capital. But that's what we're calculating in this instance. And therefore, to be able to calculate cost of capital, we need to know instead the price of the instruments. And in this example, it's 1030 This is a premium bond right here. So we identify that input right here. So armed with the cash flows, the investment period, and the current price of the instruments, we can definitely calculate the uh, rate of return on this instrument, the yield to maturity in this instance. So using our BA2+, plus, let's uh, pull it up. So it's going to be, um, so we clear this up. So again, second clear TVM, second clear work. And then put in the blue, which, is, which are the cash flows of 40 is payments, and 1000 is the face value that you'll get at maturity. And then the red is the investment period, which is 10, is N. And then the green here is the price. So 130, 1030 that is. And uh, he, uh, pl put this plus minus thing so you can have a negative in front and then enter it as PV. That way, uh, what you're calculating will come out right. All right, the equation has to uh, stay balanced. All right, because price is on the left side of the equation and everything else is on the right side. That's actually the reason. So we compute I over Y. So now be careful. What you're seeing right here on the screen is the semi annual yield. All right, all yields calculated must be expressed annually, and that's the point I make here. Final interest rate must be annualized, and to do so, simply go times 2, and that's your final answer, 7.27% approximately. All right now, if you want to use Excel to do this, let's bring this up. Again, you're going to have your input right here. And here's your cheat sheet right there. That's the rate function on, on Excel. And then you're going to have to identify your semi-annual data. So um, this is what I did right here. Um, reference equal the uh, phase value. And then also reference the uh, cash flow payments, which is the coupon rate. However, be sure to divide it by 2. So slash 2 to show you the semi-annual payment. And then the number of periods, hit equal, reference it, and make sure you times two so you know that there are 10 semi-annual periods contained in five years. And of course, the price right now equal is the same, all right, 1,030. So now let's come here and, and solve for uh, the rates, looking at this, my little cheat sheet here. So equal rates, all right, open parenthesis. And it's going to be in the number of periods. Click on it, comma, and then payments. Um, you click on this 40, comma, and then PV, 
which is the price and make sure you type negative before you click on it so you have a nice little um, result and then comma and then uh, click on your present value which is the sorry your face value which is the future value of the bond also so close parenthesis and that's what you have but again be careful this is the semi-annual rate it isn't your final result so let's go back up there you can do one of two things you can hit F2 the function key F2 and then times 2 alright and that's your final answer or alright while sitting right here you can go up here and type times two up there and hit enter and you get the same result. All right, so that's all she wrote. And right here, I have a nice little practice problem for you. A 10 year bond with phase value of a thousand, interest rate is 3.8%, which is the coupon rate it pays you. And current price is 978.5. So this bond is a discount bond because price is below a thousand. And with semi annual payments, your input come out looking as I have shown them. So go ahead and uh, um, find what the uh, yield to maturity is. And that's it.